The Captain, USS Enterprise, Starfleet Sector 9. Inauguration ceremonies, Altair 6, have been advanced seven solar days. Your order to alter your flight plan is filed to accommodate. Order of Comac, Admiral, Starfleet Command. Acknowledge. Ugh, I acknowledge Starfleet. All right, looks like I got my work cut out for me, but um, to begin with, I think this calls for a drink. Specifically, a Star Trek drink. Welcome to another Down the Rabbit Hole video, and we're going to do another Star Trek video. This one's a little odd. This is some Star Trek whiskey, kind of. Um, what you're looking at is George Dickel Tennessee whiskey, which is a real thing. This is a, um, I think this is called a powder horn uh, bottle, which is an unusual design that uh, the George Dickel uh, Tennessee Whiskey Company released back in the 60s. Um, this may or may not be a legit original, I'm not sure, but, but we'll talk about the actual bottle itself in a second, uh, because I'm going to try some George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey. Now, um, in the show, it's actually Saurian Brandy. And we do see quite a few times various characters pouring themselves a drink of it. Uh, Kirk has a very famous sequence where he's there with Yeoman Rand, having had a good swig of this stuff, uh, of the Saurian brandy. Um, and in fact, even uh, Elan of Troyus decides to down a, a swig here and there. So the, the show definitely um, showcased this bottle in quite a few episodes. Uh, but with some changes. I mean, they gave it a, a red strap and they took away all the... Um, uh, Dickel Tennessee uh, markings. Can you make that out? Yeah, sort of. Um, so I just thought, you know what? It just makes sense. Since I'm talking Star Trek and I'm starting to do different kinds of stuff, um, why not try out? Uh, and, and also, I have some uh, some cut uh, glassware, like my Blade Runner bottles and various other things. So I thought, well, it just makes sense to combine this to, to go in the liquor cabinet. Let's get a Star Trek bottle as well. Um, so this is George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey, and I believe it's a sour mash. Where does it say it here? I don't think it does. Um, and that is kind of like Jack Daniels. It's a way of taking old mash of uh, from the distillery and mixing it with the new to kind of migrate the, the flavors over. I believe it's more used in bourbon, but um, anybody who's a big booze fan, you'd know better than I would. I'm, I'm totally an amateur here, uh, but I just thought, okay, I got to get a bottle of this stuff and have a drink of it because I'm doing Star Trek. Now, um, this is an original maybe bottle. I don't know. It does say, I don't know if you can make it out there, souvenir bottle along the bottom. I'm not sure if that's coming through. So this um, may or may not be from the 60s. It's, a, it's definitely worn in places. So, I mean, I know it would usually have this, the date on there, but it's, this looks old enough. Got this on eBay for not too much money. It was empty at the time. So what we did was we just popped over to the liquor store and got the original stuff. Here it is. George Dickel Tennessee Sour Mash Whiskey number 12. Um, so I've poured most of it in there. Left a little bit left behind, and I will describe why in a sec. Uh, so this is the George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey in the Star Trek bottle. Let's have a drink of it and see uh, what Kirk and uh, the various other characters in the show enjoyed so much. Uh, again, this is not uh, Saurian brandy. This is what the original bottle contained. And I happen to have a pseudo Star Trek-ish type of a glass to pour it into. Now, um... I don't know the difference between American whiskey versus Scottish whiskey. I know typically American whiskey is more bourbon and rye and things like that, or maybe rye is Canadian. I don't know. Uh, but this one is very, very specifically a whiskey. Not only does it say it on the original bottle there, but it does say it here too. So this is definitely a whiskey. Um, and, oh, one other thing I did notice when I was looking at the bottle, in addition to it saying souvenir along the bottom there, it's probably hard to make out, but it says 27 years of stubborn, uh, 27 years of stubbornness, but we made it. Uh, and I, when looking that up, apparently um, after Prohibition, I think uh, it took about 27 years for the distillery uh, to actually get back up to and running. So this bottle, or maybe the ones from the 60s, uh, were kind of to commemorate that with this powder horn. I guess it's called powder horn because you would have put gunpowder into a rifle with something that looks in the same shape. I don't know. 
So, I guess without further ado, let's um, let's give it a proper pour and see what it tastes like. Now, um, the bottle is in uh, not great shape. There should be a string that I think connects down to there. But the cork, and let's see if I can get this into the shot. The cork is definitely good. I mean, it's it's seen better days, but it does hold. I actually filled this with water, put the cork in, and tipped it upside down, and it held. So, the cork is good, though aged. Now, let's give it a pour. How do you pour from these things? I guess this way. Let's uh, set that carefully into the shot and try it out. All right. George Dickel Tennessee Whiskey. Let's pop the cork back on. And let's give it a sniff now. Um, as per my um, Johnny Walker Red Label video, I totally confess, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to booze. Like, I'm I'm an amateur. I don't know the right way to smell these things or to check for different flavors and stuff. But I know what I like. So uh, let's give this a try, and I'll tell you if I like this. Starting off with just um, having a little sniff of it here. I'm getting brown sugar notes, a bit of cinnamon a little bit of vanilla. Uh, much like other whiskeys, I would put this, um, the, the at least as far as the aroma, this is in kind of the Highland Park kind of territory. Seems very, very fragrant and nice. All right, without further ado, let's actually have a sip. Oh, that's very, very pleasant. Oh, I like that. Yeah, no, that's that is some nice stuff. Um, okay, how would I describe it? Uh, it's got a nice sparkle to it. It has, again, that cinnamon kind of um, very much in a Johnny Walker area kind of a flavor, but with a little more punch behind it, and not quite so much orange. Um, Johnny Walker, at least Black Label, has a lot more of an orange kind of a flavor, more orange peel. Uh, this does not have that. But this has uh, a good, strong kind of. There's an impress. There's an impression that is made when you drink this, and it does last. Actually, there's a very nice long finish. It continues for a while. I know some people accuse, in the case of Johnny Walker, it, it's there, but then after the delivery, it kind of just leaves really, really quick. This one stays around for a while. Yeah. Well, I can see myself drinking this. Let's have another go. Yeah, um, a different a different body to um, the other standard whiskeys I've had. I would put it as um, a little more base to it than, say, Highland Park. I know I compared the smells. Um, and not not light and friendly like uh, Jameson or Old Bushmills. This is, this is a little more down to earth, but um, it's got a nice flavor. This is very, very nice, this stuff. All right, so George Dickel, you really know your stuff, especially with that sour mash. I guess that brings the flavor across. It's got a nice color. Don't know if there's actually. Let's check the um, let's check the bottle. Is there artificial color in here? Because I know that tends to be a thing. Does it say it anywhere? Uh, talks about um, oh vanilla and smoke. I don't see it mentioning. Artificial color. In fact, I don't even see where it lists such things. Do you? Um, no. Number twelve. So I guess it's a that's its age statement. Twelve year old, I guess. Yeah. Forty five percent ABV. Okay, so yeah, this is. I'm assuming that's natural color in there. I know a lot of. Um, Whiskies are kind of guilty of coloring theirs, but uh, this one's got a, a very nice orange color. Goes with my uh, captain's uniform very well. Um, and also just a super nice rounded flavor, very cinnamony, bit of a, a kind of a sparkle, almost like you would get from drinking 7-Up or something, but without the fizz. It's just got this nice kind of... Hey, I'm here and I'm I'm gonna make some friends type of thing. I'm I'm George Dickel and and we're gonna have a good time together with this very cool bottle. All right, cheers. Now before I finish off, 
there's only one last thing we have to do, and that is to drink this officially. All right, well, let's drink this the proper way in the hallway of your starship, of course, because you're gonna, because you're the captain. So let's uh, do this proper style like Kirk. I believe uh, in the hallway scene from Enemy Within, he's got it turned up and he just gives it a good swig. So here we go. Wish me luck. Yeah, that would give me a shot of liquid courage. And uh, actually, there's another shot in another episode where he's got it turned down. So let's try it that way. I don't know about the design of this bottle. This is going to allow this, but here we go. Bottoms up. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, and brandy. Not really. Now, um, I mentioned earlier the reason I've left some of the bottle in the original, uh, like, standard shape and poured half of it-ish into this was that so that in case I've got guests over, friends who have seen this video and are all like, hey, uh, what does that actually taste like? I'd like to try some. But your lips were all over the top. No, no, no. I've held on to that portion so that other people can try. But... Meanwhile, I got my Saurian brandy bottle. Awesome stuff. Yeah, quite like the old George Dickel Tennessee whiskey. It's very good. All right, well, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.